in part A in order to calculate the average velocity between two seconds and three seconds, we use the following definition of average velocity. We simply take the position at time two and subtract the position at time one, and then divide that by the value of time two minus time one. So what we'll need to do is actually figure out the two position values. So we're going to calculate the position at a time of three seconds first. So we can call this x of three. And to do that, we simply plug three into this equation for t. So we'll have 9.75 plus 1.50 times three seconds and then cubed. And of course, we'll punch this into our calculator. And when you do that, you get 50.25. Note that the position is measured in this problem in centimeters, so this will come out in centimeters. We're going to calculate the position at a time of two seconds. So to do that, we'll plug two seconds in for t. So 1.50 times two seconds cubed. When you punch this in, you get 21.75 centimeters. So now we're ready to calculate the average velocity during this time interval. We take the position at the later time at three seconds, which is 50.25 centimeters, minus the position at the earlier time, and then divide this by the difference in the times. So it would be three seconds minus two seconds. So when you work this out, you should get 28.5, and the unit will come out in centimeters per second. So this would be the correct answer to part A. Moving on to part B, we need the instantaneous velocity at two seconds. Now, instantaneous velocity is computed differently. What we have to do is actually compute the derivative of the position function with respect to time. So we're going to look back at our position function. Might help to recopy it here. X equals 9.75 plus 1.50 T cubed. And we're going to compute the derivative. Now the derivative of 9.75 is zero. So we would have zero plus, and then the derivative here, you use your power rule. So you multiply the power by the coefficient and you get 4.5. And then t is now raised to the power of two because you have to subtract one from the original exponent. So we can see that the instantaneous velocity is equal to 4.50 times time squared. Remember in part b, the value of time was two seconds. So we're going to compute v of two. We'll simply plug two seconds in for the value of t. And so 4.50 times two squared turns out to be 18. So we end up with 18. And again, this should come out in centimeters per second. So this would be the correct answer to part B. In part C, we are asked to compute another instantaneous velocity, but this time at a time of three seconds. So we're gonna compute V of three. So this will equal 4.50 times three seconds squared. And this turns out to be 40.5 centimeters per second. So that's the correct answer for part C. We go to part D, and it wants the instantaneous velocity at two and a half seconds. So once again, we're going to plug in for the two and a half seconds into our velocity equation. So V of 2.5. And when you work this out on your calculator, you're going to get 28.1 approximately centimeters per second. And now moving on to part E, the instantaneous velocity when the particle is midway between its positions at two seconds and three seconds, midway between its positions. Well, let's recall that the positions were these values right here. So this was at a time of three seconds, and then this was at a time of two seconds. We want to be midway between those two positions. So what we can do to find the midpoint or the, yeah, the midway point is basically find the average value. So we're going to call this X bar and the mid position would be 50.25 centimeters plus 21.75 centimeters, and then divide that by two. That would give you the exact midpoint of those two positions. And when you do that, you're going to get 36 centimeters. 
Now, our goal is to find instantaneous velocity, so we're going to end up needing a time value that we can plug into our velocity equation. We don't have that time value yet, but we can find it. Because what we do is we're going to take this position. And we're going to plug that position into the position equation. Again, recall the position equation was 9.75 plus 1.50 t cubed. So we'll take 36 and we'll plug it in there. And then what we'll do is solve for time. And this will give us the time required to reach that mid position. And so to solve for this, we're going to subtract 9.75 from both sides of the equation. You're going to get 26.25 on this side. And then you will divide by 1.5. That gives you 17.5 equals t cubed. And then finally, to solve for t, you're going to take the cube root on both sides. And so the cube root of 17.5 is about 2.6 seconds. So that's our time. The question wanted the instantaneous velocity. So we're going to plug that time into our instantaneous velocity equation. Remember, the instantaneous velocity equation we had found was 4.50 t squared. So we'll have 4.50 times our time value squared. And when you work this out, you are going to get roughly 30.3, and this will be centimeters per second. So this would be the correct answer to part E.